What's up guys, it's Ray here. Sorry, there's some like kids out there who have been out there for literally, it is currently four o'clock right now. They've been out there since 11. So I'm just gonna try to like overpower it by talking loud. The parts where they go super loud, I'll try to cut out. But if you hear some like random screaming in the background, I promise no one's getting murdered. It's these kids outside having the time of their life. So anyway, today's video. So here on my channel, I feel like you guys know that a mass majority of what I do on this art channel is trying out new stuff, new products, items, techniques, just stuff that I've never tried before. And one of those things that I am surprised that I have never, ever, 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 ever in my life have ever used is markers. Yes, it is true. Like, I've never used markers in my life. There was actually a time where I owned a Copic, and it was for a video titled, How Many Pages Does a Copic Marker Fill Up? I'll link it down below. But I've never actually used any kind of marker to make artwork ever. And I feel like every single artist here on YouTube, literally almost every single one of them uses Copic markers or markers in general. At this point, guys, it's kind of like a staple that art YouTubers have like a giant Copic selection and they do like Copic tutorials and yeah, you know, I just, I don't want to be left out, okay? That's what it is. I want to be a part of the cool kids on YouTube and I want to try out these Copic markers and alcohol-based markers too. And before we jump right into this journey together, I would like to give a huge shout out to my art Instagram, which has been doing pretty good lately. Like you guys have been really enjoying the content that I've been putting up. And plus I joined IGTV and I put up my first Instagram video thing. So if you guys want to check out my journey there, the link to my Instagram will be down below. And yeah, with that being said, without further ado, however you want to start this, let's go ahead and start the journey. And after the intro was filmed, I did the most old lady thing ever. I just sat there for five minutes complaining about the kids on my lawn, having fun. We need to just start the video already. We're live, we're ready to go. Okay, cool. Hello guys, welcome back to my new studio, my new setup. Uh, this is the second time you guys are ever seeing this right now. And I thought today we would go over all the markers that I bought. Cause I bought probably way too much. And again, today is a new day and there's still kids who are screaming outside their heads off. Uh, so again, I'm gonna try to talk over it and I hope that they eventually leave. That's such an introvert thing to say, but I really do hope they leave so I can film in peace. So first things first, I didn't know what type of alcohol markers to get. I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, there's only one brand when it comes to buying markers and that is the Copic brand. But that price, like, I just can't do it. I just absolutely cannot do it. And with markers, I think you generally need more than just six because you need, like, transition shades and stuff. So I went out and bought so many more. So let me introduce them one at a time. This is the floral favorite set, and I think it's just so pretty. Like, do you see that pink and those reds? Ooh, like, I want to wear these as makeup colors. That's how pretty they are. Next, I got these, uh, what are these? <laughs> these don't have a brand name. They're so knockoff of the knockoff. They're just brand, they're just brandless. Um, I don't know if hashtag coloring is the brand or what's going on, but they are alcohol based. So why not just try them out? They were both really cheap, so why not? Um, next up, I got the Spectra marker. These are basically like Copic knockoffs again. Um, they were all on clearance, so I just picked up every single one that they had because, you know, why not? But for these, I'm like really excited to try out the uh, tips on these. They look a lot like the Copic ones. Like that's really, really cool, right? And then lastly, we have, I think I bought almost every single one of the brush markers that they had. These are basically the Winsor & Newton version of Copics. Um, they have the brush nib, they have the chisel tip, and they were only $1.24. So that's why I went a little crazy, is because they were all on sale. I didn't know much about this brand. Like I was literally in the uh, hallway aisle listening to a Bailey J video on my phone, trying to get a review to see if these were good. Apparently, there's two types that are almost identical to each other. There's the Pro Marker and the Brush Marker. The only difference is the Pro Marker has a small little tip and this one has a brush nib. 
and these are obviously going to be the much more superior ones, so I did buy a few of the pro markers, but I mainly stuck to zip brush markers. So yeah, rad, right? So needless to say, I think that I have a great variety of marker. What is that? Hold on. Sorry, the AC turned on. But as I was saying, I think I have a great variety of colors to work with. I think I have a pretty good selection of what I can work with. And I won't be afraid to waste any of these because some of these were really, really cheap. So yeah, um, I guess we can start. Okay, on a real note, I did absolutely zero studying on how to use markers. I just went in head first. I mean, I've seen videos of like Jazza and Bailey use these before, but I've never in my life. So, uh, <laughs> so this is me just coloring in a practice image before I do something like balls to the wall, you know? And this is of my dad, Vegeta, from a, an anime you might have heard of titled Dragon Ball Z. As somebody who's only ever used Crayola markers, I thought all markers were the same. Like, I didn't understand, like, what was the difference, but I quickly found out because every- because Crayola markers, they do that thing. You know that thing. And with the artwork I do, I do a lot of blending, so I was like, uh, this is not gonna work, this is gonna be so hard, but look how beautifully that arm blended! And I can single-handedly say I've never experienced any kind of art supply that lays on so evenly, so predictable, like a marker. I see you, girl. I see you. So I had this whole speech prepared where I was like, oh my god, they're the best thing ever. But, uh, it was out of focus and then I forgot to turn on the audio because, you know, Ray. And so we're just gonna jump right into me talking about how good they are and we're just gonna go straight into, uh, the drawing. But just know I tried. <laughs> okay, so hear me out. Markers, they kind of reminded me like watercolor, except a lot more in control, if that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like not in control because every other medium that I use, oil, drawings, like I'm used to just being able to smear all the colors together and they make a perfect transi transition. But with this, I had to think about the color story. I had to think what would mix together. I had to test out different transition shades. And that was honestly like the hardest part was like, what colors can I put in between these two colors to make it look like they all belong together? And you're probably not gonna notice, but I ended up not using the hashtag coloring unknown markers. And the reason for that is because I, just upon testing those super cheap markers, the brush nibs looked like this. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly, right? But I guess that's why they were on clearance. But the other ones, the Winsor & Newton ones that I'm using right now, those ones were amazing, like really, really, really good. I posted the final image on Instagram, which you guys are gonna see later in the video. And the number one question I got is like, how did you blend so well? And the honest to God answer is I just had a crap ton of transition shades. Like so much layering, so much blending. And I can see why everybody has, who has Copics have a lot because you wanna have a lot of transition shades. Which is kind of bad because of like the price, you know, the price point isn't ideal. But man, is it so worth it. And with that being said, I have finished my first Copic drawing. Woo! I actually really like that song. <laughs> okay, so my official Ray Dizzle, I guess, experience review on markers, alcohol markers and Copics, was that I really, really enjoyed these. Like, I've been wanting to get into illustration for a while and I just never understood, like, how I could do it, but I feel like this would be an incredible way to get into it. You know what I'm saying? If I had to put in order which ones I loved and which ones I hated, like by far the hashtag coloring ones were absolutely terrible. These are 100% canceled. 
The next ones, which are pretty good, uh, were the Spectra. These were just pretty average from what I could tell. Then it was the Winsor & Newton ones, which are the ones that I got for like super cheap. So I'm probably literally gonna go back today and get every single one that they have. They were just so smooth and incredible and they just, <sighs> they were just so smooth for a marker. I just, I've never experienced anything like this before. So guys, in the future, don't be too surprised if you see alcohol-based markers on my channel. In contrast to today's video, last video, I did a video on Dollar Tree, so I'll link that down below if you guys want to check it out. And uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for watching. Uh, I love you guys, and I will see you next video.